Finally, we can talk about the Ryzen 9 7950X. This is one of the most requested reviews on the channel. When we did the whole CPU test for creators, you could see that the 3D vCache CPUs weren't included there because I kind of had an expectation and based on my research, what I can see online, they weren't going to be as good of a bang for buck for creators as they are for gamers. But now I have tested it myself. I'm going to put the ultimate gaming and creator CPU, as AMD would like to call it on their website, the ultimate creator gaming CPU. Well, we'll see about that against Intel's best, which would be 14900K at this point. So let's take a look if AMD's claims about this CPU are true and should you go with the Ryzen, AMD or Intel. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com and if you use the code TN20, you get an extra discount. Complete the purchase, copy the key, and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done! Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out hookies.com in the video description below. We've got 14900K here, 7950X 3D, 7950X, and 14700K. Mostly I want to focus on the 3D and the non-3D versions of these CPUs because both of them have 16 cores, 32 threads. They're both max turbo frequency is actually the same 5.7 gigahertz but the base frequency is actually 300 megahertz lower on the 3d version 4.2 compared to the 4.5 on the 7950x which is interesting all the pci lanes and ddr5 support is the same but the cache is actually double on the 3d v cache cpu 128 megabytes that is like four times as much as the 14900k as you can see there not exactly, but almost. More like three in a bit, actually. Everything else on the specs here is probably familiar to you, but I want to focus on the price here. This 7950X, at the point of me making this video, is $591. It's almost $600, right? And it stayed there for quite a long time because AMD knows it's their flagship CPU. And if you want the best, you know, like we did for Lando here, you want to go with this one. But is it really worth it for creators? What's the actual value proposition here? And does it make sense? Because the 7950X is around $50 cheaper. The 4900K is about $40 cheaper. And right now there's some deals going on. So probably back to school, you can get it even cheaper. And I want to throw in the mix, the 14700K, which is about $200 cheaper and 30% cheaper in the price point. Just keep these price points in mind when we look at the comparisons and the benchmark results to really see where you're gonna get the best bang for buck here. Now, bear in mind, Intel's 14th gen is the last generation that's supported on that platform. So if you go there, there's really no upgrades available. Whereas if you go with the Ryzen platform, there's plenty of upgrades to come on that platform but we'll have to see about that. If you want to check out my test bench setup, I'm going to leave everything in the description below as well as the CPUs mentioned in this video. So go check out the latest pricing. And if you want to pick any of these up, the links are in the description below. Firstly, the memory controller, I'm not going to stop here too much. If you want me to go a little bit more in depth about it, it's the 7800X 3D video where we talked a little bit more about the memory controller, but essentially the 7950X is the same as the 7950X 3D. So nothing's changed in there. Intel seems to be a bit better on the 14th gen and that's that. Now, let's look at the max power draw. We've got 14900K that if you don't enable the Intel's limits, it actually pulls 325 watts plus from the socket, depending on your motherboard, how much power they're gonna put there which is absolutely ridiculous. Like no cooler can actually call that unless you just put it in the freezer. But if you stick to Intel settings, it should pull only 256 watts. The 7950X pulls 230 watts and the 14700K pulls 295 watts if you just let it go mental on the motherboards. But I highly recommend making sure that your Intel CPUs are running within the actual stock settings because there have been quite a few reports that the CPU is actually degrading much faster if you run it at open limits or let the BIOS decide how much power to put through. Highly recommend enforce all limits that Intel suggests from BIOS because that's how the CPUs are meant to be running just if you want your CPU to run longer. That's what we're seeing so far. Now, AMD 7950X 3D is pulling a lot lower than any of the others. When I'm testing this, I can see only 150 watts being pulled from the socket because the 3 dv cache is actually a lot more temperature sensitive and 
the max temperature on that chip needs to be lower than on the 7950X3D because they're like V-caches on top of the cores and which is kind of a weird the design, but it works, but it just has to be a little bit lower. So that's why it pulls less wattage as well. Interestingly, we still get the same clock speeds out, but a little bit lower. All the testing done in this, what you can see there, have been done with the motherboard settings as auto when it comes out of the factory. The only thing I've enabled is the iGPU and the XMP profile for the RAM. I'm letting the motherboard decide all the power limits, even though I just said turn them off. But for most people who don't know as much and don't know how to set them off, they just put the CPU in there and just let it flow. That's the results that we're going to be getting here. So Cinebench R23, our 7950X interestingly is about the same in single core score and the multi-core score is about 6.2% faster but the 4900K is about 12-13% faster than the 3D version of that chip which is interesting. 14700K about 5% faster single core score about 6% slower on the multi-core score. Bear in mind we're pulling a lot more wattage than this 150 watts so it's impressive to get that good performance on such low wattage on the 7950X3D. Moving on to Cinebench R24, the 4900K about the same, 11 to 12% faster, 7950X about 4% faster only on multi-core score, and the 4700K about 7% slower in multi-core score and 5.6% faster in the single core scores. Geekbench 6, very similar to the Cinebench scores here, 4900K is actually a little bit closer to the 7950X3D in the single core scores, only about 6% faster, and but still 12% faster in the multi-core scores. 7950X performs pretty much identically within margin of error. And the 14700K, again, only 1-2% slower, faster, about the same as 7950X3D. Bear in mind, that's $200 cheaper. Now, the actual applications, Photoshop, 4900K is about 7.6% faster in the overall scores, 8.5% faster in general, and 6% faster in filter scores. Bear in mind, the GPU score has been actually pulled out from the overall scores. The GPU score doesn't actually make as much of a difference in the overall scores, but the GPU score, what I've seen, the more vCache you have on the CPU, it's the same as on the 7800X3D. GPU scores are actually very, very good. The 7950X is quite a bit slower actually in Photoshop. And you can see that, that the 3D V cache here kind of makes sense. It's about 10% faster than without the V cache. And about 41%, is that true? Yeah, about 41% slower in the general scores, but about 40% faster yet on the filter scores. So interesting kind of performance on the 7950X. The 14700K is 3% faster, 2.5% really in overall scores. Performs very, very similar to a lot more expensive CPU. Now Lightroom Classic, the 14900K about 10% faster in overall scores, active and passive scores, again, faster than the 3D version of this. The 7950X, interestingly, again, slightly slower than with more V-cache, even though we have better base frequency and pulling a lot more power and multi-core is better but still a little bit slower interestingly in Lightroom Classic. The 14700K is about 5% 4.6% faster in overall scores, 8.5% active and 3.2% faster in the passive scores. So 14700K $200 cheaper but yet faster than the 7950X3D. Now for photo editing kind of little conclusion here looks like if you're getting the vCache version for photo editing, it's very, very good and often performs better than the non-V 3D vCache version of the chip, as you can see here. But if you look in the best bang for buck, it's probably around this side on the Team Blue version. But in this photo editing kind of example, looks like AMD's claims of being the creator and gaming CPU kind of makes sense because Yes, it is good at that and beats out the 7950X, which is a non 3 dv cache CPU. Moving on to video editing and Premiere Pro, the 4900K is about 13 to 15% faster in the standard and extended overall scores. Quite a bit faster, especially if you look at it, the long GOP scores and standard scores, it's close to 40% faster on the standard score there and extended is about 30% faster. That's really a big leap there. Interestingly, the raw standard score isn't that much better on the Ryzen that usually is because more P cores and chewing through like a red 4K raw is better with more cores. But here, 
4900K is only about 4.7% slower. The 7950X3D is actually faster than the 3D V cache version now, about 3% faster as you can see in overall scores and some of the sub scores can go up to 5.7% faster. The 14700K, interestingly here, is 4 to 7% faster compared to 7950X3D. Quite a bit faster. Obviously, the raw standard score is the only one that's slower, but in the H.264 and H.265 long GOP scores, 31% faster. That's quite a bit. Moving on to After Effects, 4900K, 3.3% faster in overall scores. Interestingly, multi-core is 10% faster, even though we have the same thread count, the Ryzen has more P cores, but here it seems like it doesn't matter if you've got E cores or P cores, just multi core score seems to be better on the 14900K. The tracking score is about 30% slower though. 7950X is about 5.8% faster than the 7950X 3D and faster than the 14900K as well. So that is the fastest chip in this comparison. So if you're in After Effects, having a Ryzen chip might make a bit more sense for you. The 14700K, about 5.5% slower in the overall scores. Multi-core score is quite a bit lower because less cores, obviously. And the tracking is a 31% slower. But interestingly, GPU and RAM preview are faster on the 14700K. Moving on to DaVinci Resolve, the 14900K is 14 to 17% faster in the extended and standard overall scores. 4K media score, 17% faster. 8K media score is actually a little bit slower, tiny bit slower because probably the P cores are a lot more there on the 7950X, but the Fusion score is 20% faster on the 14900K, which is interesting. 7950X, look at that, is slower than with the V-Cache version. So the V-Cache version is better. Interestingly, the GPU effects are better on the 7950X, which kind of doesn't make any sense really here, but seems like the 7950X is better at feeding the GPU effects workflow from CPU to the GPU and does a faster job in there and that's why it's faster on the 7950X compared to the 3 dv cache version. And then the 14700K is 3% slower in the extended overall score but pretty much the same on the standard overall scores. Yes, the 8K media score is 18% slower and the GPU effects 20% slower but Fusion score is faster and 4K media score is faster. So depending what you're doing, if you're not doing 8K media score, the 14700K is a solid option. Now 3D applications and Blender. The 14900K is actually performing pretty much exactly the same as the 7950X 3D. The classroom scene is about 3.4% slower but Looks like the P core E core kind of a combination hybrid architecture isn't as good as just having solid, you know, 16 P cores. The 7950X though takes it to another level and, you know, the V cache doesn't here make a difference and is the fastest here. 14% faster than the V-Cache version, 4.5 to 9.3% faster in the Juke Shop and Classroom scenes, which is insane. The 14700K here is about 16 to 19% slower in the overall scores compared to 7950X3D. Moving on to V-Ray in terms of 3D, and we can see 4900K is actually slower, about 2% slower. 7950X is about 6.6% faster, and the 14700K is about 18% slower. So then, What's the conclusion about the 7950X 3D? Is it the ultimate gaming and creative, you know, CPU? So let's dissect the different workflows. For photo editing, the 3D version compared to the non-3D version is actually kind of makes sense. It's a little bit faster, but it's more expensive as well. Does it make sense in terms of the price? Well, not really. But to say that it is a creator, ultimate creator and gaming kind of workflow, it kind of makes sense and it pulls less power. So that might be good. For video editing, looks like having the non 3 dv cache version to 7950x is a better option if you want to go with amd it doesn't really make sense to go with a 3d version just to kind of get more better performance you're not going to get better performance if you're just a creator and for 3d if you're doing any rendering having the non 3d v cache version is a lot better option because you can be up to 15% faster than the vcache version. The vcache just because of the base frequency can't run as much and having more vcache on your CPU doesn't really make sense in terms of 3D workflow. So in all of these workflows, I'd say that the 7950X is a better option because it's cheaper as a creator and performs better in most of the applications or 
performs about the same. Now, if you're a gamer, actually there's good news because AMD is kind of right here. It is very good at the productivity, video, photo, 3D workflows, and very good at gaming. So this is most likely the, the best gaming CPU you can get. It is expensive, but it kind of does best of the both worlds. There is one more bot here, which is Team Blue and Intel. If you are a creator first, and do gaming second, I'd probably argue based on these benchmarks that going with Intel is a better bang for buck option because you just get more performance with that. You can go with a 14700K in most of these benchmarks, it performs better or about the same most of the time better and is $200 cheaper for $200. I mean, what can you get for $200? It's ridiculous, really. Is the 4700K as good for gaming as the 7950X 3D? Probably not. But if you're a creator first, I'd probably go with this one because if you're doing video editing, especially in Adobe Premiere Pro, then having the iGPU will give you hardware acceleration on certain codecs than none of these AMD CPUs do neither can 4090 help you from nvidia so that kind of makes sense i've got to say that amd might be onto something here when saying ultimate content creator and gaming cpu but at the same time why is the 7970x without the vcache not the ultimate gaming creator cpu the vcache doesn't really make it so much better for creative workflows it just makes it better at gaming workflows it's not better necessarily for creative workflows just because of the vcache so I'd say if you want to go with AMD, it's very good at doing any of the creative workflows here. If you want the best creator performance, go with the non vcache version because it's cheaper and better in most of the cases. And the best bang for buck, believe it or not, is actually Intel. Can you believe that? AMD has always been the best bang for buck, the better option, cheaper, better option, better value oriented alternative. But not in this case, looks like Intel's the one. Check out the latest pricing in the description below. And if you want to build yourself the creative PC, there's build guides in the description below. Thanks guys for watching. I'd love to know from you what you think in the comment section below. And I'll see you soon when Ryzen 9000 comes out. Bye bye.